So, um, how's, how was your holidays, man? How's everything going for you right now? Holidays? Uh, they're kind of kind of boring. I never got to eat what I wanted to. No, no cookies, no no cake, pies. That, that's kind of a bummer, but everything else is going fine. I weight's fine. I feel good. That's good. Is that is that kind of the downside on taking a fight around around Christmas time and New Year's? Is the fact that you know you got you can't eat and spend that type of family time with everybody? Well, I guess it is, but, but I, I eventually I'm going to have Christmas time with my family later on. January 15th, I get to celebrate Christmas with my family. <laughs> <laughs> All right, right on, right on. Um, so tell us, tell us what you've been up to. We have I, I don't think I talked to you since um, I think it was after the yeah, Antonio. Mag- the Anto- yeah, it's been a while. The Antonio McGee fight after the picture surfaced that he looked like he bit you and all that stuff right before your Castillo <laughs> fight and um. What have you been up to? Uh, not much. I after that fight, I did uh, national senior nationals for the world record team. I I went three and two. I just I was one away from placing. But it, oh, it was nice. okay. I only did, only trained for that for three weeks, and then I had a fight against Dana Castillo on August in August, and I won unanimous decision on that one. Had him in the darts for probably seven minutes. <laughs> a long time. I had a submission. I just couldn't finish. Yeah. And then um, I've just been training and coaching. Perfect. And now, you originally scheduled to fight T.J. Grant this Friday, and a um, yep. c- couple weeks ago we got word that he was out. Um, Efrain Escudero is coming back to the UFC on short notice to face you. What was that, what was that whole process like, learning you, lo- you lost your opponent, now getting the new guy and all that? It didn't really change too much because their, their game plan was probably – Pretty similar. He's a wrestler. TJ Grant's a jujitsu guy, so they're going to be shooting more and trying to get to the ground. Um, th- the only difference is I got to watch out for Efren's uh, hard overhand right. So I'll be surfing my right to his left, and uh, I- I'm not afraid to get in- get him to the ground because he's just a a JUCO wrestler, which is kind of like a high school wrestler. Right. Right. Um, <laughs> this- do you, have a pre- do, you have a pre- do you have a preference on the opponent? I mean, would you have rather have fought TJ, or are you happy with Efren? Well, Efren's got a better name. He's he's more more known, but TJ's I think he's more he's higher ranked. He's a better fighter. So mm-hmm. it's a horse apiece. It doesn't really matter. Doesn't really matter. Okay. And w- w- what about just I want to touch on this real quick. Um, since dropping to to lightweight, you haven't lost the fight. Um, you, you you took on a guy like Paul Kelly, who who's a pretty good fighter, decent fighter. Um, you took took out a guy Anto- Antonio McGee, who hadn't lost in years. He had like a huge win streak, and then Danny Castillo, who you know he's looked really impressive at fighting everybody in the UFC besides you. So I'm just wondering, what are your thoughts on that? How you feel at lightweight, and, and where do you think you stack up in the division? Because it's a, it's a really deep division, but so far you haven't had any you know real hiccups. Well, I felt I feel the same as I did at, at middleweight or light or uh, welterweight. To be honest, the only difference is how much I'm training now as opposed to when I was at welterweight. I'm, I'm doing one and a half practice or two, two, two to three practices now, as opposed to one to one to two practices a day when I was at welterweight. So I'm I'm doing a little more work, I'm putting a, putting quite a bit of more time in the training. Mm-hmm. So it, okay. it just it doesn't. I don't know. It doesn't really bother me too much going on with lightweight. Okay. But as, and now, as far as your placement in the division, where do you, where do you see yourself? I, I mean, Efrain, in all fairness, he's a good fighter. He has a good name, but he he's a guy that's just coming back into the UFC. He's not really a ranked guy in the division. Um, but you have been, so like I said, the notable guys, the McKee and the Castillo in your most recent two outings. I mean, where do, where do you actually see yourself, uh, you know? Amongst your well, peers. if I wouldn't be fighting if I didn't have a, the main goal would be to, to win the belt. But I gotta work on my stand up the most. I think that's that's what's keeping me back from fighting the top ten contenders. Is my stand up is not the most exciting, and I haven't finished anybody to be honest. That they're looking for somebody that finishes fights and somebody that has really good stand up for knockout power for the mm-hmm. being the top contender. So uh, I, I need some work to be honest, and that that's what I hope to open up a little bit against Stefan here. Okay, are you speaking of the the finishing rate? Um, 
let's touch on that. Do you you know there's a lot of criticism. There's a lot there's a lot of people that that talk down upon guys who don't finish fights. You have the John Fitches and the George St. Pierre's of the world where they're not necessarily like the fan favorites. Um is that something that's a, that's a pressure that's a pressure builder for you? Like, do you feel the pressure that you need to finish fights in order to kind of you know win over some of the crowd and whatnot? Well, I, I did last before my last fight against Castillo. I, I felt a little pressure there. I'm I'm trying to relax. I'm I'm trying to try not to focus on that. I wish there was a little more job security, but let's be honest, it it, it they want who who is more exciting for the fans, and that's that's mm-hmm. that's what pays their bills. It doesn't really bother me too much now. Okay, but where do you draw the line from sports, actual true, a true sport, and then sports entertainment? Because you guys are athletes, and and in the world of athletics, a win is a win, you know. So, do they necessarily have to be finishes? I mean, what are your thoughts on that? Well, some people they're going to stay standing. I am not going to. I'm not going to stay standing where it's the weakest. I'm going to take advantage of the standing if it's if it's there. But if I mm-hmm. feel like I'm in trouble, I am definitely going to take this guy down and and, and submit him or ground him pound. I'm not going to try and be a stand-up fighter when I'm not. Let's be honest. I'm a wrestler. I'm going to take this guy down. Right. So you I think I'm going to go I'm, I'm going to do what it takes to win. I'm not going to I'm not going to just be a crowd pleaser. Right. Okay. That's good to hear. Um, do you think that Efren is the guy you can finish? I mean, I know you're going to say yes, but. Um, do you, do you honestly think that he he's the opponent to give you your first finish at lightweight in the UFC? And if so, give me give me some basis as to why you think that. Well, I think he's got a lot. Uh, he's got a lot less of. He doesn't have as much defense for my for my uh, submissions as the other guys did. I think my even Paul Kelly had decent submission defense, and uh, Honey Torres is really good with the submission defense. I think this is a, the easiest one just because of. He's inexperienced. He doesn't have as much experience as the other guys. Okay. Makes sense. And I, I, I want to touch on this, too. I know you're not shy to talk, so let's talk about this. Um, for for my guys on BJPenn.com who may not have read the story or the, the previous interview you did, you mentioned, like, some distaste for Efren based off a regional show you guys both attended. I was wondering if you can kind of give me the same similar story and give me some background on, on your impression on him as a person and stuff and and all that. Well, I was I was down cornering a, a teammate of mine down in CFA in, in Miami, Florida, and he was down there fighting Mike Rio, and uh, just the way he came across, he just was very arrogant, and it was hard to, hard to be around him. I just, I just had a bad vibe as, as soon as I saw him. I didn't know who the guy was, but after I after I found out who he was and I had to fight him, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, I remember that guy. Is that? Does that give you any? Does it make? Oh well, does it make it easier to go in there and fight him and try to try to you know try to hurt on a guy that you don't necessarily care for? No, it doesn't matter. Who cares? I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna take it easy on a guy just because I get along with him. It's a job. You gotta do do your best out there because they're they're trying to pay the bills and you're trying to pay the bills. Right. Okay. Uh, how do you think he's going to approach this fight? You touched on it a little bit. Um, you know, your wrestling, you know, on paper is, is way better, is far superior. But how do, what do you, what are you expecting from Efren? I mean, he has, and the reason why I ask is, we know how he fights, but the guy has a really he has a really good training partner in Ben Henderson. So I'm wondering, you know, if you take that into consideration, that maybe you know he's he's evolving and he's getting better, and maybe you know is more dangerous than of people. Of course, might think. getting better. He's he's back in the UFC. I, they they wouldn't take him back unless he had, had made some improvements. Um, his game plan, I'm assuming, he's going to be a lot of movement. He's going to try and avoid me taking him down. So he's going to be uh, just one two punches, um, some some kicks, but he's going to do a lot of backing up and a lot of circling. And and how do you um, counter that? I just go after him. Yeah. <laughs> Throw some combinations and then get after him. As close as I can, as fast as I can. Okay, perfect. Um, now, as, as far as as far as the event goes, do you think that being on a Friday, there's going to be less eyes on on the fight because everybody's used to uh, a UFC on Saturday night, and this is kind of a hot topic in, in MMA in the MMA world right now. Uh, you know, the casual no, fans are just. No, I think 
I think it's going to be a lot more people watching it than there was on a Sunday night because last year was a Sunday night we were here. Mm-hmm. Um, it was it wasn't a sold out show, but this should be a sold out show just just because of the fact that Brock Lesnar is fighting and he's fighting a stand up guy and people I don't know, some people like to see it. they want to see either Brock get beat up real bad or they want to see Brock submit a guy and and just power double the guy right or ten ten yards and smash him through the floor. So I think there's there's going to be a lot more people watching than you think. Okay. Um, how do you think of that? What do you think of that fight? I mean, you're a wrestler, so I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that you're probably going for the wrestler in that main event. But what, do you, what are your thoughts? <laughs> so this this the, the guy from Europe. What's his name again? Um, Alistair he's Overett. Never, yeah, he's he's never practiced wrestling before. I'm assuming he's never wrestled before, has he? Um, he hasn't fought too many wrestlers. I don't really know what his training's like. He doesn't really talk about it. But he hasn't really yeah, fought any guys like sure. Yeah, I'm assuming that he hasn't practiced Division One wrestling. And, and if he hasn't practiced against semis, I, at last time I talked to somebody, I was like, if he is not practicing takedown defense against semis, he's not going to stop Brock Lesnar's takedown. Brock is going to run him over just like a semi. <laughs> yeah. Um, have you have you had a, have you had the opportunity to 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 watch Alistair Overeem ever or not really? No, I didn't know who he was until owner I was on the site. Okay, fair enough. Then let, let let me ask you this too: the co-feature of the evening on your card is a, is a lightweight fight. That's your division um, between Nate Diaz and, and Donald Cerrone. What do you think about that fight? That's a pretty good scrap. I think that's a great fight, and I would love to fight the winner of those two, but I don't see it happening. Um, mm-hmm. I think the next they're 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 next in line for the title fight after uh, Henderson and and uh, Frankie go at it. Right, but that would be that's going to be an exciting fight, and I think it would be fun to fight one of those two. Mm-hmm. How do you? Who do you think's going to win? Do you have a prediction there, or somebody you're really oh, giving more than Cerrone. Yeah. Cerrone's hands seem like they're quicker. His kicks are a lot better, but his ground game's not as good as Diaz. But I don't I don't see Diaz taking him down. Right. Yeah, I don't. I don't see that either. Um, so in Jacob Volkman's perfect world, you would get the winner of that fight. You obviously think that you can um, win it. I'm, I'm wondering where you think your your wrestling is the difference there in between the in those in those fights between those two guys. Yeah, yeah, and um, the the difference is controlling them when I'm on top too. I, I'm going to be able to control them. If I if I get the winner of those two, the hard part would be getting him down without taking a beating. Right. And what what do you have to do? I just, a few more questions, Jacob, and I'll let you go. What do you have to do um, to actually get recognized and start getting those guys? Maybe maybe not the winner of Diaz versus Cerrone, but somebody who's at the top of the division with the name. You know, what do what do you think you have to do to convince the UFC that you're hey you're ready for that you know for that kind of opponent that kind of spotlight. I need to stay standing. I gotta get a. I gotta show that my hands are are, are good. I gotta show my kicks are good, and uh, prove that my stand up is just as good as my growing game. Okay. And that's, what, what that's are you that's doing? The only thing, I think. No, go ahead. I'm listening. I think that's the only thing stopping me from fighting a top contender is they don't know what my stand up's like. And what are you what are you doing to work to work towards that? Well, I do hands every day, and I, I spar two or three times or two or three times a week. You don't want to do too much because then you just end up getting injured. Mm-hmm. You sparring with takedowns, you just practice on your timing, power, stuff like that. Do you, Do you think that that's the only the only route to go to get to where you want to be? Or I mean, let's say you you know. Eventually, there comes a time, even if you're decisioning your next, you know, you win all your fights and you're decisioning them all, and let's say, you you know, you go through your next seven, eight, nine opponents in the same fashion, I mean, eventually, they're going to, they're still going to have to call on you to say, to give you a contender fight, don't you think? I mean, no matter what, eventually, yeah. it will catch up to you. Yeah, they did that with Fitch, but it's a lot easier to do to do it if you're more exciting and more of a fan favorite. Fitch did, right. was he on an eight, eight or nine fight streak, and he finally got a shot at George St. Pierre. Right, exactly. Oh, all right, Jacob. Well, you've given me, you've been gracious with your time here right, right after the holidays, so I appreciate it. Um, is there anything else I missed? Anything maybe you'd like to say before I let you go? Or I mean, I'm good if you're good. I'm good. You just check check out the new post I put on Twitter of Sean Shirk. 
Okay, I'll check that out. All right. Awesome. Thanks for your time, man, and good luck this weekend. Yeah, thanks. All right, Jacob. Bye.